Okay, so you guys just finished up with part one of that tutorial video on how to make the birdhouse. In this part, um, I'm going to go over how I want you guys to come up with that material list and figure out how much material you would need to do the job and then figure out where your cuts would be and everything if you were actually building this project. So for that, I'm going to jump over to my screen here, which you guys should have something like this with your birdhouse. Okay, and so when I'm at this screen right here, you can see that all I have is that birdhouse, which you guys should all have on your screen somewhere. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put in the board that I would be making this out of. Um, and that way I can rip apart this uh, birdhouse and place it on that board to figure out how much material I would need. So to do that, I'm going to go here to the rectangle tool and draw a quick rectangle. Um, I'm going to purposely kind of put it off to the side here a little bit so it's kind of out of my way. Um, so I'm going to place it right here. Um, I'm drawing the rectangle out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a dimension of eight feet. So that's the one little tick mark there, comma, 5.5 inches. That's the two tick marks. Um, because if I went to a lumberyard and actually purchased a board, it would be 5.5 inches, five and a half would be a one by six. Um, and then most boards that you purchase are going to be eight feet long. So that's what I'm going to purchase at the store. Like I said, that's readily available at Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. So that's my dimension. I am going to pull this up to be one inch. Um, so I'm just going to type in a one and put that there. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the material just so it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to change it to paint. Um, I'm going to go down to, if you don't have this up, you'll pick this little magnifying glass, go down to wood. Um, and then I'm just going to choose this one down here. It's kind of a yellowish color. It's OSB, I think is what they call it. I'll go to here, hit control, hold it down, and then click to add that paint. So then that's my board that I would purchase at the store. Now, I'm gonna start to rip this apart, but I don't wanna tear apart the original that I made, so I'm gonna make a quick copy of it. The way that you make a copy of it is you pick the arrow up here, and I'm gonna highlight, drag a box, and highlight this whole project here. Then what I do is if I come down here to that move symbol, okay, I just go with a regular move, what I do is I hold the control key down, click on the house, and then you can see that I make another house and I can just release my mouse, release the control key, and then I have a duplicate copy of that house. I pick the select and then just click off somewhere just so I deselect that house. So now I have two houses to work with. I have the original over here, which we'll do something with later, um, but then I also have one here that I can rip apart and lay on top of this board. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to take all these pieces and lay them on top of this board to kind of figure out where my cuts would need to be and how much material I would need. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick the, um, the move key over here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the largest board that I have. So just looking at this right now, um, and like I've taught you guys before, we always do the largest boards first because if we made a mistake or something like that, we could use the larger board for a smaller piece that we'd have later on down the line. So like I said, just out of habit, I always start with the largest board first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this perch and get rid of it for now and just set it off to the side like that. I think that the front boards are the largest. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and just tear it out of there really quick, okay? Now to lay it on the board, obviously this isn't gonna work with it standing up like that. So I'm gonna need to rotate it into position to lay it on top of the board. So if I go over to the move key, there is a rotate button right here. I can click on that. And then with this little uh, protractor here, I can rotate things around. What I'm gonna do to lay it down is I'm gonna to have to do this in a couple moves. What I'm gonna do is move my uh, mouse up towards my view up towards the top. So I get something like this. So I'm rotating it that way. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit, click. Um, and then it kind of, once I click, it kind of wants to know what, where I wanna take it from. I'll just click somewhere else, that's fine. And then what I can do is I can rotate that, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this around 
so that it's sideways. So like this, you'll feel it kind of, it locks into place when it hits those, you know, zero and 90 degree increments. So I get it to there, I click, okay. So now I've turned it that way. Now I'm gonna move it and lay it down. So again, I kind of move my view so I get a nice view here. Click on the side of this, um, and then you just click again, and then click, there it goes. And then I can lay this flat like that. So again, you just have to kind of play with that protractor, that rotate symbol a little bit to get it to move the way you want it to. Once I get this done, I'm gonna go ahead and move this onto the top of this board. So all I have to do is click move, now, generally what I do in this situation is I grab the board um, that I'm going to move by the bottom corner right here. And then what I can do is when I come down to my regular board, it automatically snaps on the one edge of the board. What I would do is the, the edge of the board that's the closest to you, that's the one I would snap it down to just to keep it all in one line with each other. So if we did go to a table saw or something like that, like I said, it would be easy to, to just know that that's the side we're gonna line up everything with. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move this and I'm just gonna set it here somewhere on the edge, close to the end of the board. Now, I taught you guys earlier that we always have to burn an edge and this has no, this is this gonna be the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here on the end so that when I did actually use this for my project, I would be able to come in and cut a fresh cut here on the end. Now, to do that, typically, um, we usually need to be at least an eighth of an inch from the end of the board. I'm gonna go ahead and make it just an eighth um, just to keep everything simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here below the move tool, there's a dimension tool. It's usually where your tape measure is. Right here, there's a little symbol that has a three on top. That is how you point out dimensions to things. So when I click on that, I can zoom in a little bit. And then what I can do is I can click the end of this board and then pick the end of my uh, front of the birdhouse. I can click there and then when I move my mouse, I move that dimension. So what I'm gonna try to do is not move the dimension down. I'm gonna try to move it out. Um, so it's green, you can see that, but it's pulling it straight away. I don't really wanna go down with it because I won't be able to see it when I take my um, screenshot and make my blueprints. So I'm gonna try to keep it this way and I'm gonna move it to here and then just click somewhere. So right now I can see that this is one inch from the end. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit move and I'm gonna go back to the corner of my board that I was working with. When I click it, I can start to drag it and you can see those increments get smaller. So I'm gonna get this down to an eighth of an inch, which is right there. So now I know that the board is an eighth an inch away from the end of my board here that I would be cutting out of, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead, that's that one done. I am gonna grab another board. So I'm gonna grab the back of this move this over to where I'm working. Okay, and again, I'm gonna rotate this so it's nice and flat. So I'm gonna click here, go rotate, um, go to the top, click, um, click, and then I can rotate it, click, and then now click here, there. So a couple rotations that moves into place. I'm gonna hit my move button, grab it by the bottom, just throw it back to on top of the board. Um, I know the video, if you did watch more of it, you see that they do want you to uh, set it in the board. I'm just gonna set it on top because that seems like a silly thing to use up steps like that. I'm gonna click dimension again because I need to get that eighth inch spacing because when I did come in here with a miter saw, when I would, I need that eighth inch in between the boards. So I'm gonna click on that dimension tool I'm gonna to come to the bottom of this peak. I'm gonna click, and then I'm gonna to go to the bottom of this board. I'm gonna click. Now it wants to draw it diagonally, but if you move your mouse like this, you can see if you just kind of move it around, it changes. If I move it like this, that's what I'm kind of looking for, is like that. Again, that green line is important because that's showing that it's going straight across that way. Then I can just click my move button here, 
grab the bottom, move it over to an eighth of an inch, click, and then there's my eighth inch spacing between these boards. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue doing this um, for the rest of the boards. Um, the ones that I do want to go over with you are the roof. Um, I do want to go over those really quick because there is a trick to the roof that I want to make sure you guys know. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this roof and just move it over to here. Now the problem with the roof is, is that it's turned at a 45 degree angle. You have to rotate this this way first before you turn that 45 degrees. Um, I'm just telling you that because I tried it and that was the only way I could get it to work. If you rotate that 45 degree angle first, you can't just rotate it across. It becomes an issue with that. Um, so again, I just hit the rotate. And then all I'm going to do is just kind of change my view to up here like this a little bit. And then I'm going to come to the peak. And what I'm trying to do is get this to where it's blue. And you'll see it kind of makes it flat with that uh, blue square cube that goes around it. That's what I need it to do. If it goes black like this, you're just going to rotate it at that 45. Um, and that's not quite what you want. So, oops, I just did it. Um, actually, you know what? That will work just fine. Sorry. Um, I will use the black and rotate this. You know, it's not quite doing what I want it to do. There it goes. Click it to there. And then that should have spun it. Nope. See, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So, sorry. I don't want to redo this video. So, there we go. Um, there it is. I am going to go to rotate. I'm going to go to the top. You can see it kind of turns blue. I'm going to click there and click again. Oh, come on. There it is. Sometimes you have to click, but once you get it to hold, then you can rotate it this way. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, you just have to kind of mess around with the corners to get it to do what you want it to do. I'm going to rotate it this way, get it so it's straight in line with the board I have down there. I'm going to click. And then now, like I said, you can see that I've got it rotated that way. Now I can come in here and rotate that degree, that 45 degrees out of it. So I'll just come here to somewhere. Mine's turning red. Click, um, click again somewhere. And then I can rotate that flat like that. Okay. Now I can go ahead and grab that. Come on. Move tool. Zoom down to here. Grab there slide it along the board like so um, and then I can zoom in and then get my dimension tool out click from here to there again making sure it's got that green line then I can hit move grab this corner move it in till it gets to an eighth of an inch right there so now that board is laid on top I'm going to do that same thing with the other roof piece. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to get the roofs out of the way. Um, I'm going to click the rotate and get to the top here somewhere. There it is right there. Click somewhere else. Get the rotation like that. Okay. Spin my view. Take the side of this board. Like so um, click again, rotate it so it's flat like that. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this corner and move it back down. And sometimes you got to zoom in a little bit. There it is right there. Okay. Come in to grab the um, dimension tool. I'm going to dimension from there to there. Oop, there it is, the green. Okay, grab my move tool and move it in to an eighth of an inch. So now there's that other piece of the roof. OK, 
okay? The other pieces, like I said, are a lot easier. The roof is the most tricky because of the rotation. Like I said, you're better off spinning it first and then rotating that 45 out of it. Um, you might find a better way if you did, great. Um, I did not, and it just seemed like a lot of work to try to get it figured out. So I'm gonna take this one. This one's pretty simple. This one I can just lay down. So I can just click there, click there, rotate. Um, grab my move tool, move from the bottom over to the board right there. Dimension there to there, make sure it's green. Grab my move tool, move from the bottom over to an eighth of an inch. Oops, making sure you keep it along that edge like that. Okay. And then I can grab my other wall. Again, I'm going to rotate this. that move into position right there I usually try to when I place it on the board I usually try to get it close just so I can stay kind of zoomed in a little bit um, just seems a lot easier um, do the dimension tool like that uh, move tool corner into it eighth right there okay and then i should have i think one more board here yep i do okay now this board if i look at it um i know it's not going to fit this way so i'm going to have to rotate this one so come here rotate um you pick pretty much anywhere here on top that my move tool Grab here, set it on top, right on the edge. Dimension, there to there, and make sure it's green. There we go. Move tool, and move this board over to an eighth, and click. All right. So right now I've got all of my boards kind of set on top of that other board, except my perch. I'm not too worried about the perch just yet. Um, but you can see that I've got all these boards spaced out an eight, uh, eighth of an inch apart. That way I've got room for my miter saw to come here and cut. Okay. Now I've got quite a bit of this board left. Um, so what I'm kind of wondering now is can I get away with using a six inch or a six foot long board instead of an eight foot board. And this is one of the nice things that this actually does bring into play is could I buy something smaller and still have enough to make project, save a little bit of money and time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change my view here a little bit to get ready to put this on paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my view to get it pretty much up and down. Um, my computer's a little slow because I am running Google Meet at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm moving my view so it's straight up and down, okay, like so, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out where my dimensions are. Um, this will help me when I go, actually, go to actually build it because everything will be on paper in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that dimension tool that we've been using, but instead of picking the board itself, this one that we purchased, I'm actually gonna be clicking on the parts of the birdhouse and picking those out. So now because this has got a 45 cut into it, <clears throat> I need to have that done in a way that I can tell what every piece of it is. And so what I mean by that is I'm gonna dimension this twice actually on the one way. So I'm gonna click the top corner here and I'm also gonna click there. And that way I know what that dimension is. And then I'm gonna do the same thing from I'm gonna click on this dimension tool again. I'm gonna go from this corner to the peak of that roof. And I'm just gonna put that dimension a little bit higher like that. That way when I actually go to produce this and cut it, I can lay out my lines really easy because I'm gonna to have to know where this point is and this point is to take a ruler and draw it to cut it. So again, I'm just planning ahead for myself. Now I've got that pointed out there. I'm going to move this over and I'm going to do the same thing on this board 
And what I'm going to try to do is if you move up with the dimension, you'll notice it kind of locks on so it's in line with that other dimension that's across. So I'm going to go ahead and click that there. I'm trying to keep my screen somewhat organized and clean because like I said, if you were actually going to build this at home, you want everything to be clear so it's easy to read and things like that. Now I have these dimensions pointed out from left to right, but I don't have the width brought in here. So I'm going to go ahead and with the dimension tool, I'm just really quickly going to click on this and this, and then just put that dimension just right there. And so that way I can see that it's five and a half inches wide there. I'll do the same with this board, because if I'm building this, I would rather have too many dimensions and know what I'm making rather than have to guess later on. I come to the next board, do the exact same things, except these I don't have to worry about the peak. So all I'm really doing for these is going like this and like this. And then move down, do the same thing here. Move this up, click there. Oops. Yet be careful with your clicks because you need to click on the dots. Oops. There. Okay. Do the same thing here. So all I'm doing is just going through here and getting all of these set. That. And the last one is here. Like so. So right now I have all of these dimensions laid out, okay? Now, I can't forget about the perch. Although I wouldn't be buying that as a board, like a, a one buy or something like that, I still wouldn't mind having that perch in my view or at least with what I'm gonna be working with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that over and just set it to the side of these other things like this, okay? And that way, oops, that way I can see what I need, so I'm going to move this out. I need to grab it by this bottom corner to move it like that. Oh, there we go. Grab it there, set it on the end like that. I don't need any spacing or anything like that special for it. Move my view. And then I'm going to throw a measurement on that because I need to know how long of a perch I would need to be purchasing. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to dimension that. Clicking on that one end and then just going to the other end. Oh, maybe that's not going to work. Did before. I'm going to delete this. All right. Okay. There it goes. So I clicked on the two ends, and right there, that tells me that that perch is going to be two and a quarter inches long. Yours will probably be different because he really did not give you guys a idea of what um, it was going to take um, for a size. So right there, I know that I've got a two and a quarter dowel that I would need for this project. Now, I also want to kind of call out a few things um, because, like I said, if I am making this, I am going to want to know some information. Oh, come here. And the things I really need to call out is the size of this hole that's drilled here and the size of the hole that is drilled here. So again, with that dimension tool, okay, I'm going to just have the dimension tool. I'm going to zoom in on this circle. And I'm going to click right here. 
and I'm just going to drag this down. So what that's telling me right here is that this hole has a radius of one eighth of an inch. Now it has a radius of one eighth of an inch. So I would need a quarter inch drill bit is what I would use to make that hole. But at least I have that dimension there to follow. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one here. I'm gonna hit the dimension tool and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Kind of come to here, click and come across there and move this over. So now this one, if you look, i zoom out a little bit here. This is not gonna point out what the actual um, ra radius is, but it's gonna show the diameter of that. Um, and I'm not actually happy with that. So I'm gonna try that again. There to there. Oh, come on, I thought I got the click, click, and... All right, there. And then I'm going to move this like this. And that's two inches right there. So now I can tell that that hole is two inches. And the radius of this one is an eighth of an inch, which would mean I would need to drill a two inch hole here and drill a quarter inch hole there. That way that'll help me, like I said, when I get ready to do this project, I've got everything laid out. I'm not too particular that this isn't, um, this is a little angled. That's fine. If yours is too, that's fine. Again, we're just trying to point out these things for the blueprints. So now once I get this done, I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to be printed. Now, one thing you might be asking is, well, what piece goes with what? If I'm laying this out, I don't know where these parts go. So something that's important, and you guys did it in the video, if you remember right, you made components. So you gave them names, like this was the front, this was the roof right, you guys did all that stuff. What I'm gonna do is with this dimension tool, if you kick this open, there is this button right here that says like A1, I believe it says. I'm gonna click on that really quick, and then I'm just gonna come to this top board here somewhere, click, and click over here. And what that does is it lets me put in a name. They already have a name because I gave them a name earlier. So what I'm going to do is just click on these and then just point out what they are all called. So that way I know what part goes with what when I'm looking at the blueprints and getting ready to build this. So all I'm doing is just clicking on the surface of it and then just trailing off perch there. So now I have all of my boards labeled, um, which is, like I said, very handy because when I'm cutting this, I know that this part goes here, this part will go here as I'm cutting it. So once I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the arrow tool, just click somewhere. Um, that way it just kind of clicks that off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to print this on paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the birdhouse, just to the left, there's those lines. Click on that and go print. Print will take me to here. Now what I can do is there is an option here to have a, a white background. I'm gonna pick this just to kind of clean up my view a little bit. And then when you're working in here, you can actually rotate this, move it around, do things like that. So what I'm gonna do is Come, I kind of get it in my view here. I can drop this down to scenes. No, I cannot. There we go. If you move this print mode down to print to scale, you will get this that pops up. If I click this button right here in the center, that changes it so it's a dead on top view. Then all I have to do is zoom in and I can see more of my stuff here. Now, what I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit, and then right there is my view. Now, as I look at this, something I just realized is I do not have an overall of what this whole thing is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to go back to my picture here. I also noticed that all of these like labels and things like that aren't quite working.
Um, and most of that's because of the view that I have isn't quite working. So what I'm gonna do here is if I go to this button right here with the little scenes thing, I can click top view and that changes it so I have a top view. Then I can come in here and like I said, I couldn't quite see all this front stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these around and get these, oops, right where I want them and do there. Click this one. It's like I said, I couldn't read these because they were kind of in the wrong place. So all I'm doing is grabbing these labels and moving them so that I can see them. And then I'm just moving down the line. Base could come up just a little bit. Okay. Perch. Oops. Wrong thing. Escape. Undoes it. Put that up there. Perch. Okay. All right. So now I've got this pretty well laid out. I do need an overall, um, like how much this is going to take in material. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go ahead and click the dimension tool. And I'm going to go from the end of this board here to the end of my project over here. Now, I'm not counting the space that I needed to um, burn an edge. And I'm not leaving myself any room to burn an edge on that right side either. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that up here. And I'm just going to move this up and click there. Now, if I look at this, okay. Now I'm not counting burns on the ends or the blades on the ends, okay? I'm just counting the raw material. I can see right here that I can do this in a five foot, 11 and three quarter inch board. So if I take this and I double click this, what I can do sitting at this later is I can do the math on this and know that if I've got an eighth inch on the one end and an eighth inch on the other end, that's going to add a quarter inch to this whole thing. So I should be able to do this with five feet, 12 inches, which in the end is six feet. So I would need a six foot board to make this project. So like I said before, I can actually do this out of a six foot board instead of an eight foot board, which could be quite a big cost savings depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to six feet. So that way I know that's what I need click out and there's my six foot. Now I can go back to that print. Okay, I can click this centering view here. I can zoom in. Now I'm having troubles reading some of this. So what I might do is zoom out and really carefully try to get this centered the best that I can. Okay, now I might change the paper size to be 14 inches instead which gives me a bigger piece of paper and I can zoom in. Um, I can change this to be whatever size I want. Like I said, if I am actually looking at printing this, um, you're gonna have to keep it at an eight and a half by 11. It just depends on what kind of printer you have, um, but you can change this, uh, the size of the paper depending on what you're doing. So for this, my printer would take an a eight and a half by 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 14 because that way I could read this well. So now that I've got this done, the only thing left that I need to do is I need to put my name on this um, to turn this in. So again, I'm gonna go cancel. And all I'm gonna do is go down to that text tool that is right here. Okay, I can add text. I'm just gonna type in my name. Okay. And all I'm gonna do is just put it down here somewhere. Um, I can scale this, make it a little bit smaller because that's pretty big. So I can hit this, hit the scale button, grab a corner, drag it down a little bit, change the location of it by moving it, and just move it somewhere in there, like so. And then, oops, and then just click to drop it. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the print. Now I can kind of move this stuff around, get this where I want. And so all I'm doing right now is just messing with the zoom a little bit to get this zoomed in the best that I can so I get the most information possible. I still have my name. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit this button here that says print to PDF. Once I have this ready to be printed, quote unquote, hit print to PDF. 
larger percentage, that's fine. Don't show this again, continue. And so now it's getting ready to print. Um, so wait a second here, hopefully. Okay, so now what that did is that saved it into my uh, downloads folder, okay? So what I can do now is I have that PDF. That is something that I can turn into Google Classroom, that PDF. But, um, and I can open it from here so you can see. Cancel. Come on. All right. So this is the PDF that I actually just saved. And so that's a file that, like I said, that's basically like a Word file or something like that. This is what I would like you to turn into Google Classroom is this right here. That's one part of this assignment. The other part is actually what I'm gonna show you next. So keep this file, like I said, you'll submit this to Google Classroom and turn it in, okay? The other thing that I want you to turn in is this. The birdhouse itself, you need to have something that shows me what it is when it's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here to the birdhouse itself. And this is the original birdhouse that you did. And what I want is I just want some dimensions thrown to it. So if I was gonna show this to somebody, they knew exactly what I was gonna be making um, and could see pictures of it and dimensions. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna throw some dimensions on this, okay? Just showing somebody that this is whatever size it is. So again, I'm just grabbing some of these things, throwing some dimensions here, saying, well, oops. And to the top, like that, something like that. Okay, so that way if somebody was purchasing this or is getting ready to hang it somewhere, they knew exactly how much space this would be taking up. I also want something there that I can identify where each piece goes. So again, I'm gonna use this tool with the A1, the text tool, and I'm just gonna click on some of these surfaces. Like so. So again, somebody can just see. So I think that's it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So now everybody knows where every part would go in this. Now, to do this, this is a really simple process. Don't forget to put your name on it, though, before you go any further. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 3D text. I'm going to put my name on this also. Oops. I'm just gonna put this right here, cross the front, change the scale of it. Oops. This. So all I'm doing is just kind of moving stuff around to make this look nice. Oops, I wanna move this. Like so. Oops, there, okay. So now I've got this set. I want to print this as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna go here, go print. There's my picture with all of my stuff. This actually works out pretty good. Um, and I can rotate my view. I can move some stuff around, zoom in, zoom out to get this to be a good picture. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it eight and a half by 14, that's fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit print to PDF. Now, that gave me another file that's birdhouse and then it says uh, one behind it because this is a little bit different than the one that I made previously. So I have two pictures and that's another reason why I wanted to kind of open these up so I can see them. I don't want to actually print on a printer, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Okay. So now I have, if you look, I have this picture right here, which is showing everybody what it actually is. This is what you're gonna turn into Google Classroom. 
as well as this. This is the other thing that I want you to turn into Google Classroom. Um, that's all I really got for you guys. So get those in as soon as you can. If you have any problems or anything like that, just let me know, email me, message me, or find me on Google Classroom. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. Have a nice day, guys.